Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming at you with another Wargaming in Miniature video. Uh, in today's video, I deleted a video by accident, so you don't get to see me doing day two's worth of painting. But let me back up and say we went ahead on day one, we painted with skin tone right from folk art right here and then uh, I determined that I was going to go ahead and use the splinter stripes as their primary green color of the 1943 uh, paratrooper uniform because of the, the way the green color was and then uh, the wood the not the wood yeah the wood of the entrenching tool the boots were going to be flat earth and that's all I did on day one. And uh, then I let that dry. And you saw that video on the first video. Then on the second video, the part you didn't get to see was I came back and I took my khaki and I did the backpacks, the pouches, uh, the med packs uh, on, the, on the models with this khaki here. What is it? 988? Yep. And then I used raw sienna here as the wood stock of the rifles. Uh, I used the raw sienna because I liked the color of it and it just felt right. And then I pulled out my olive drab from Tamiya, Tamiya, and uh, it's the olive drab, and I painted that on the ammo cans and the helmets as well as the trench knife sheaths and the binoculars then once that dried I came back and I did a dip using the poly shade satin pecan color because I didn't want it to be too dark because you can go darker you can go mahogany and black and all that that's but those are all way too dark and then what I've done was here let me go ahead and this is what it would look like immediately after it had dried for about 18 hours uh, they're still very shiny. Okay, I've adjusted the focus of the camera so that you'll be able to see this once I get it closer to the camera. There you go. Now take a look at the amount of detail. I'm trying to figure out how to get it close to the camera. Look at the detail how the dip or the brown pecan polyurethane is too shiny for one thing. And it really brings out the details of the models. You have, here I'm trying to adjust and shift uh, so that you can see the straps, the fold of the cloth, the way the, the flesh, it's basically your flesh wash. Look at the pouches, the boots. Everything looks better once you've put that poly shade dip on it, but you can't leave it like that. Well, you can if you like, if you like the shiny look. I don't really like the shiny look. So what I'm going, planning on doing is using the tester's dull coat on it to bring it back into reality. Okay, so let's just take a look at a few of these models. Ooh, the straps on the back. All right, let's take a closer look at some of these straps. Uh, how the brown uh, from the dip really brings out the details. Uh, without without too dark. You see, I think that's dark enough. It took the splinter shade of the uniform and darkened it down a little bit, as well as the rifle stock wood, uh, the raw sienna on the rifles. These models are starting. They're coming together. They're starting to look really good. Even the, even the med pouch straps are standing out. All right, so let me go ahead and dull coat these, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, these are the, after the dull coat dries for about 15 to 20 minutes. It's not fully dry, but you can see how the shine has been taken off and how these models, what they look like with the brown polyurethane, how the flesh and the straps look. Uh, and this is the way... This, it, it protected the model. The polyurethane uh, puts a, a coat on there that protects the model. The dull coat brings it back, takes the shine off. Okay, these guys, I might be moving these around a little bit too fast so you can't see everything. 
straps, buckles, rifles, the flesh tone. So now what I need to do is let this dry for a little while and then I will be back with day three right after this. See you then.